All right, this is part two of the headlight rebuild. We are at Akinderfest. We have the car set up here in the back parking lot. Uh, so we're gonna just turn on the video and let it run in kind of real time. Uh, this may be entertaining, it may not. Uh, hopefully we'll have some hecklers. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and rebuild the second side of the headlight assembly while we're here at the event. We'll get, we'll get going. If we haven't met, my name is Nathan. I do have a YouTube channel, a lot of 914 stuff. Um, it's called Barefoot Garage Jacks. I've, and I post, I've been posting stuff on Instagram while we're here. So we're gonna kind of walk through this. This kit is from 914 Rubber. got a few more people walking Okay, we'll give them a second. Yeah, but you gotta get your beer like you do on a YouTube channel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, we're good. Did you, did you just record? I did, I am, yes, you are being recorded. So oh, feel free to heckle as you so choose. Thank you, Tim. Um, and I can edit you out later. So um, oh, we're not going to be famous. Yeah, we can. We can yeah, get you guys famous. I don't like later. the camera. It has twenty pounds. So <laughs> I'm standing. Whoever right was here. in front of me on the dragon, I think knew it because they got over and let me by. They did not want to be recorded driving that loop. I was like, oh, that's a good, good uh, recording of your car. But um, so this kit for the headlight rebuild is from 914 Rubber. It's this is an early car, so some of the stuff that I'm going to show you may not apply if you have a 73 or later. Um, so bag of goodies, new headlights around, because the up to middle of 73, something like that, they had white. So like the sixes had white, the early cars had white. Do you know when they switched? Middle 73? 72 is last year. 72 is last year. So 72 is last year. Actually, actually in the middle of 73. I've got an early 73 minor white. Well, the, if it's an early 73, if there were any left over, they would have carried over yeah. for the 73 model. So the biggest difference here oh, is yeah, green circle had those too. the uh, uh -huh. push rods for this. There's a push rod that actuates the headlight um, changed. And then the brush style, this is the brushes. This has like a broom and rubber deal that tries to keep the water out versus the newer ones have like a, if you watch Ian Carr's video, it's got like a rubber socket that goes on here and fits up here. Um, so you're getting that. This is they all the kits come with the push rods. This is the nylon push rod. My car has a metal push rod, so there's a bushing that goes in it. And so when I did this on the other side, I've got like a box somewhere down here of leftover parts that I didn't use. And I honestly I may go back to the stock surrounds because it kind of goes more with my car than the white ones. So bushings for the push rod. You get a zip tie. Although the one that's in there, at least on my car, is reusable. Uh, these are the pivot bushings for the whole assembly. This assembly has got some wiggle in it, and so when you go down the road, it kind of just does this, and so it's really useless, even though these are really bright headlights. It's not very helpful. Um, grommets for your eyebrow, for these guys to hold them in. Um, new plates, there are two plates that hold uh, the gross adjustment. So there's one inside the fender and one here. You can see it if you're over here. And so there are new plates. Um, that go with that little cool gold zinc color and new adjuster screws. So the adjuster screws on these are a um, Allen key, which means if you want to adjust your headlights, you need Allen key. So I did, I skipped this and I skipped the zip tie and the nylon thing when I did this other side. Um, so you can choose what parts you want to put on there, but it's a super comprehensive kit. Um, I think it's like 200 bucks. Um, so we'll start pulling this side apart. If you have a question or whatever, you're welcome to stop, jump in and stop me. For doing this, you're gonna need a Phillips head and probably a right angle Phillips. This is something I don't use a lot, but to get in here, to undo this and this, this is super helpful. If you don't have Allen key sockets, you're wasting time. These are the best things ever. Put them on your impact and just zip this off. These are great. Um, a 13 and then uh, some kind of set, uh, ratchet. So to get my headlights like this, I turn on the headlights, uh, keyed on, headlights on, put it in park, or put it in parking lights, they'll stay up, uh, keyed off, and then went and unhooked the battery. So I've got a battery off while I'm doing this, not that it's a lot of voltage, but I would just, uh, that keeps them up. There may be other ways to keep the headlights up, but that's just kind of what I've done for this. So normally I'll set out like some bins um, as I'm doing this. I'm gonna try to just do it on the ground or in the car or whatever. Um, so these guys just pop out, if you didn't know that, this one has one grommet left, so that's why it comes out super easy. Um, yeah, that's what it is. This car, this is actually the only, really the only rust on this car is right here in this channel. The two holes exist, but you can see one of my holes is missing. 
So I've got to make a new piece of sheet metal that will fill that. Um, so after I do it for you guys, I'll, I, when I get home, I will clean and paint and take this all apart. So like in that side, all the parts are clean and fresh and rust preventative, so I don't have to do it again. So for today, I'll show you what we're doing and then we're gonna take it back apart. So this guy's got three screws in it, um, one on each side and two, uh, and one in the top. And you can pop this surround off. If you ever change the headlight, this is what you've done. You can do this in the car for whatever. Depending on your car, you may be able to get it with the not using the stupid right angle screwdriver. But, um, and then these just come out. So the reproductions are, uh, I would say from a texture perspective, are really close. Um, they're really bright white. I don't know if they were originally this white. I've this is the only set I really looked at. Um, dimensionally, they're super good and they, they fit really well. So whatever you want to do is, but it is cool that you can get those and when you buy the kit, it will ask you early or late and you can choose which black or white headlights around. So even if you have an early car like this, like when I got the car, I did not understand why they were black and I thought that looked stupid or they weren't black. And I was going to paint them until I realized that that was something specific to the early cars. And so I've kept them there. So if you, if you have a traditional, if you've ever had a traditional headlight, old school cars, whatever, the seven inch, it's just the three uh, Phillips head screws or drywall screw screws as it is right here. Um, they pull out your headlight and then you can just unplug it and move it out of the way. So these are not, if you can't tell, these are not stock headlights. These are uh, KC full LED replacements for a JK that I got on a best offer on eBay. And the only thing with this compared to like your classic LED ones is that they are extra, extra deep. And I'll show you what I mean. With the headlight retaining ring on here, this is considerably, it sticks out. So it's still concave like that, but in order to do that, there is a small dent, don't look, in the car. In order for it to pivot down, this would not clear as I went down. So I've had, I've actually cut this little nub here and uh, modified the car there to get this to fit. So if you're stuck at lights, it's super easy, it doesn't really matter. Um, so we'll get this guy out of the way. Three screws for this are different than the three screws for the surround. You can see that you've got a true count, I don't know how well you guys can see this, a true countersunk head on this one, and then this one's got a little bit of a dome to it. Um, so pretty easy to tell those apart. Like I said, if I'd brought little bins, we'd have them separately. So. All right, so you can see the whole mechanism here. This is the adjuster. There's an adjuster at the top. Um, there's an adjuster at the top that adjusts this. And then there's an adjuster on the inside that adjusts this. And there's a spring. So basically, the spring holds the thing in place. And you can do this and this to get it aligned. That headlight, not aligned. Um, but I'm waiting to do it until they're both in there and I can get it on like a nice flat level surface. Um, there's also a way to adjust the how far it comes up, and so that's something that you can do as well. So Question. You can adjust it without taking the bezel off, huh? Yes, sir. Okay, so so okay. you've got uh, a hole here and a hole here for those adjustments. Okay. So that's one of the things on these adjusters. These new ones are a uh, Allen key, which is not always something I keep in my car, but I always have a flathead, and so I kind of elected not to put those in um, when I changed it because I really just... You want to have it accessible however you know wherever i am just with the tools that i would have had so those new ones are stainless which is kind of nice too so this piece comes out super easily um there's a spring in here that holds the tension you can just grab it with pliers it's not really that strong maybe it is not something you want to lose but probably i'm about to lose Talk about yourselves while I struggle with this. It's okay, we can edit this out. Let's, I'll speed this part up, or I'll, or I'll have somebody ask a really intelligent question while we do this. <laughs> Why the car three, top, three different colors? Um, that the is Charlie the way... Brown chocolate <laughs> banana. <laughs> that is the way the car came to me, with the exception of the hood. Um, my... It, if, if you want to know the full no, story... No, I was I was asking intelligent. Um, I've bring, got bring, uh, bring, 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 bringing bring it back. Intelligent question. <laughs> yeah, this is just the way it was. So, see, once that's out, see how it's all floppy? You have to back these adjuster screws all the way out. This is something you could probably do with a drill a little bit easier. 
Um, one of the things that I don't know the answer to, maybe one of you guys does, is uh, the bucket and all the mechanism is gray. I don't know if that's how it's intended to be or if mine was primary or something, um, but these, that's just how they are uh, on my car. I don't know if that's what the same as your car. Way. This car is a 72. So one of those little minutia details that I'm not 100% on. Mine look like a bronzy rusty color. So you don't necessarily really have to do it right now, but I'm just it. taking it apart while it's held in place. Eventually, we're taking this whole thing out here. Nathan, I think I have a yellow one of those uh, headlight brows. I can send oh, yeah? I can send it to you. Right. Oh, well, parts that. So what just fell out, you'll see, is the back of the adjuster blocks. And there are new ones of these. So I'm just taking all the used parts that are coming off over here, which I'll probably save in my garage or you know whatever as backup sort of give to somebody if somebody has a problem but you are going to get new ones of those they don't do the falling out thing because they're they have little retention tabs on them so what i was saying about the right angle screwdriver not really as important for the surround um, there are there you go. the nice thing is these are pretty well retained and so you kind of have to really pop them out or grab them with pliers, pop them out with pliers, so you don't have to worry about them flying off. Um, they have a little slot that slots in right here. So there's your two adjusters to go in like this, and just remember the spring goes kind of opposite of those two. So with the 90 degree screwdriver, there is a couple screws holding this on. You can probably get away without removing this, but just to show you guys, I will. Um, there's one here. And there's one here, way down in the corner, and so it's a un, it's a difficult thing to do. And we'll see if um, we'll see if we can do it without that, and then I'll show you guys why. You can tell it's already kind of loose on this side. So um, eventually, what we're trying to get to is our mechanism, and I'll I'll stop in a second once this is all naked, and you guys can look at it, and um, you'll see what I'm actually talking about here. Anybody already done this job? I've taken mine apart and adjusted them. Yeah, but I haven't. You haven't done the bushings and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. So if you had like a nice, you know, little right angle on your screwdriver that was tight, you could probably get in here to do this. It might. It would have been nice if this was slotted, so you could take that one off and then pop it out. But um, uh, you may, may be able to get this out without taking this part off. But we'll take it apart so you guys can see and. Would you think about sliding it when you put it back in? I would totally do that. So, um, like I said, I'm going to take it back apart when I get home, so I may not even put this screw back in, because it's just going to go in the trailer and home tonight or tomorrow. Um, but yeah, that would be a, a much quicker way to put this back together. It's just a little machine screw, so it's not anything like super difficult and long here. But you do need to save it. You are going to need it to, to put this back in place. This is the most awkward part of the whole thing. It's just a, a tiny, tiny little thing. And you can see if I put my regular Phillips head up there, you just, you're never gonna get an angle on that, even like this, um, which is not happening. So. Once you get to here, you can kind of start wiggling it and getting it in my hand. So there you go, eyebrow comes off. Um, there you go, my car was 041 black. Um, and you can see they just oversprayed that crap out of it. You can see all the way down the side of the lights. They just shut the lights and did it. You can see the primer all in the fenders here. And this is not the original hood, so disregard that. Okay, so if you want to come up and look, this is the best view of the mechanism you can get. Um, this is what's holding the whole mechanism. Um, this is what goes up and down with your push rod here. Your push rod is coming through what is this wiper brushy assembly I talked about to the motor here. So. Your motor, I just bought this today and put it in place, not even remembering we were doing this, um, has these little covers. So your push rod goes from here to here. It's clipped on one side and not on the other. And so you can see this play is because the nut on this on the back side is gone completely. It's just not there. And so we will pull out the harness um, I don't know if the later cars have this, but this has the, a really nice 
kind of factory style reusable tie, which I will also, which I'm going to reuse because um, you don't have to cut it and you don't have to really do anything with it. So this wiring harness is in good shape, so I'm not really super concerned about replacing it or changing it or doing anything like that. So from here, we're going to pull out the corner light and then we can pull the whole assembly out and start taking care of the brushes and you know all of the everything else in here. Here's a zip tie. I'm just gonna push this down out of the way. So the corner light is held in by this like little U-clamp back here. And I find it best if you just cut the wheel to the side you're not working on. And that way you get yourself a little bit of room to just stick your hand in there. Um, I don't know if on the non-flared cars it's as easy as this, but on this car it is, it is super easy to just um, cut the wheel and get to what you need to. So let's turn this a little bit. That's pretty much all you need right there. So it is, I believe it's 10 on the back, and then that whole assembly will just kind of slide out. The only reason we're taking this out is because otherwise it makes the access to your backside um, mount on the inside of the fender here a lot more difficult. Um, plus with that out, you can kind of peek in that hole to line up those screws versus being completely blind um, if you're doing it the other way. So now I don't have corner lights on my car. Um, so that does make this a little bit easier because you don't have that like special double boot thing that is holding it in place. Um, and I'm just doing this by hand. I don't have a ratchet on this at all. Um, so in here, this basically just sits in the fender. You got a star washer and 10 mil nut that holds that in. And now the whole thing just kind of does that. And it's totally fine to just sit out of the way. If you want to peek in the fender, you can see where the, other, where the two inside Allen keys are. Um, and those are two that we're going to have to come out to do this. So they look a lot like this, um, but it is a two hole, not a three hole. Um, so then these guys will come off on that side. So I'll do the fender ones first, just because they're more difficult to access and require a little bit more gymnastics. They should not be super tight. And these little plates are coming off too. So um, this is where your Allen key sockets is the best thing ever, because you can just rip these off pretty quick. Don't lose the bolts because you are not getting new bolts. So they're going to have a star washer and a regular washer. Put them right inside of this so we don't lose them here. For you East Coast guys, it's easy. Yeah, if this car. This car has been in dry storage for a long, long, long time before I got it. And so it uh, was far pretty easy for this car. So that's what's on the inside is this plate, which you will get a replacement for, and that hardware. And then I'll just pop this back in here while we work. Yeah, three here. And I'll take out two of them, and then we'll take off the push rod, and then we get that last one. So I took, I'm going to take the push rod off at the motor first, and it is held in by what I call like an E-clip. And so I just tend to do it with a flathead screwdriver. I'm sure you could do it with something else, but this will come off right here. Now oh, stabbing my hand. There's also a, a little washer that's on the inside of it, which you will get a new one on. When I did that side, I found the new washer was too thick, so I did reuse this. So that is definitely something to not lose because I do have a strong feeling you're gonna need that. So now it's a matter of just taking your push rod off. Now, as I mentioned, this nut is missing, so this whole side is completely loose and is just coming apart. So whatever you wanna do, either side, I think it's easiest to take it off the headlight side. Just give it a quick pry and then this guy will pop off. So ideally, we're not going to bend it too much. Um, but really, you just have to wrestle this guy off. 
this is where some of these bushings go. And so, so that way I just pushed it past. So there. There's your metal push rod. So you are going to get the bushings that go in this side, uh, in each side, and then you also have the option of just replacing it with this one. It's just whatever you want to do. I don't know which one. I think the later ones came with the plastic one because of the way the rubber system worked and this wasn't in there. Uh, but we'll deal with that in a second here. This bushing you will not need to reuse. So old parts are kind of going behind me back here. So now we'll just grab the last one out and pull the assembly completely free of the car and start taking care of the bushings in here. So it's definitely a good time to clean and paint this if you haven't done it. Um, just get the grime out, grease it. You won't need to reuse that, don't worry about that. There you go. There's your assembly with the pivots. You will need both of these pivots. The two hole for your outside, three hole for your inside. And then we've got to get the bushings out of these ends. So the problem, as we determined with this side, was that this pivot, which is bronze, was missing the nut. It goes right there. And you can see the nut was missing. And so when the headlight went up and down, it was just doing this. So fortunately, I have planned ahead. And I did go ahead and put a 10 mil nut for it in my box, which is, let me see that cardboard box. Perfect. Hey. So that we can put this thing back together correctly here. Hopefully it's in this box. Um, so we'll put that back together in a second. Now uh, let's, I'm going to wrestle these out and you guys can take a look at the brushes here. This has got the brush and rubber thing that the early cars had. I think they changed that on the later versions, but um, kind of an unusual and semi difficult way to Thing to put back together so um, if you have the ability so what's to what's the these, intent of the brush to clean um, the yeah out? so basically it's when it's up this is open to the elements and so you're trying to keep the water from getting into the relay and everything in there these have a drain that goes literally straight down to the bottom you see me drop stuff and it just drops through that drain and falls out so the water can get out here but you just don't want it to get here so that's what we're trying to do is to keep that from getting all the way into the car here so um, when I did this last, the one side was missing or gone, and when I did the other side, I just kind of pried it out or broke it out with a screwdriver. So you just have to, whatever you can do to wrestle these out, and we will not be reusing these guys. What's funny, they put all the engineering into that brush. Yes. And all the other areas of the car, that rust, <laughs> it looks like it didn't yeah. get a thought. And, and in the end, they changed from the brush design in 73. They changed to... What goes, I, my car doesn't have it because it's an early car. There's a little round metal piece here and a formed rubber bit that comes in and goes through here with a gasket so the water can't get to your relay or to your motor or anything like that. So we'll put this to the side for now. Let's take everything the rest of the way apart. Hopefully I can find the 10 mil nut that is actually what's here to fix this. Ah, here it is. Um, so this needs to be nice and clean and it needs to be tight. Um, so I'm going to pop this guy in here with this flange nut and make sure that we're tightened down and we will not have floppy headlights the other way home. It takes a lot of foresight to bring all the tools you know you need for the job and not have access to your garage and everything else that you normally have. So I've tried to pre-think what it is we need to show you guys this. So this is out. And then the only other thing that's coming out is your brush. And so when I did this, I had to do a lot of research to figure out the arrangement of the brush and the rubber, because what you get is both a scraper set, which goes like this, and this rubber flappy. And you also get this guy that holds the rubber flapping in place. That side 
it was broken. This side, it's completely missing, so I didn't really have a good reference. But basically what's gonna happen here is your rubber flappy, uh, I took my old one and I punched a hole in it, which this one's missing, is um, it goes underneath this, it flaps over it, holds the clip or the brush, and then this goes, and so the arm will pass through the rubber and then through the brushy. Um, so I ended up cutting a little bit of a slit in that so that when it sits in the car, the rubber is your kind of like first line of defense for it to just stream the rain off or whatever it is like that. This is a little bit awkward to put in, so I'll save that for a second, but it's just two Phillips head screws. Um, so you can see where here is the old one that holds it in place. You need this, you will need this screw. And you can see this is what all that's left of that piece of rubber. Um, so what I did on the other one when I had the whole piece is I just laid it on top of each other and just reamed it with a screwdriver and that gave me the reference hole I needed. So I'll do the same thing here as best as you can because it does kind of fold over like this. Um, so I'll put a hole in it right there. And then when we put it back in the car, it'll sit like that. What did you say the name of the rubber thing was? The rubber flappy? The rubber, that's the technical term. That is a technical it's term. Really technical, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the Haynes. It is. <laughs> that was the error in the Haynes manual, was, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> rubber flap. So I'm not saying this is the way it was, but this is how my car is. It has a, a speed nut unattached on the back and it has a way oversized machine screw. So the only modification to this I had, you can see that's where, that's what's keeping the water out. So it's obviously not doing a great job is I had to drill out this lower bolt to like 3 16 so that this would fit through. I don't know if they originally had something different, um, but the best way I found to put it back in is to just put this through here and hand thread it up, uh, get your top rubber flappy in, and then uh, you can put the rest of it up. So I just hold this little speed nut on the back. Um, it doesn't clip, unfortunately. It just kind of sits there um, until you get it arranged the way you need it. So. That's enough to get me in the ballpark for putting this back in. So um, I'll, I'll kind of put this in and then I'll move and you guys can take a look because this is kind of the order of operations of getting this in is a little precarious and unusual. So, but this is our new first part coming in. This is far apart as we're going. We're not getting any deeper into anything uh, to take this apart. So my old screw which I said, hey guys, don't lose this. Probably moved it. So I found that the slot that it gave you is not big enough. And so I ended up adding like another couple inches to that. Um, so that that arm passes through a little more easily. I don't want anything binding that up and like frying that relay or anything like that. So let's grab. A little screw under your toolbox that's the one <laughs> you can tell from the overspray see that's why you guys are here um, so it's folded over like this the little pinch piece goes in like that and then we're going through this and at least on this side the rubber was behind um, I don't like I said I'm not I'm not gonna say which one is 100% because I've actually looked at the 914 rubber diagram and I have tried to look at some other pictures but this is a little bit of that unusual early car stuff that is just, everybody goes, I'll just change it to the late stuff. Um, so I'll screw this in and then I'll move and you guys can see what I'm babbling on about here. Basically, we're just trying to keep water out of the mechanism. So I do now see, I had somebody comment on, one of my, on my video that, hey man, you should switch to the late style. And I actually looked at a piece of, piece of them at the swap beat, but now looking at my car, I don't believe that's an option because the the piece of metal ring here that is molded for that to fit on, I don't have one to show you, um, doesn't exist. So while you could fit it into here, it would just kind of flop around on this side. So um, now that that's in, I'll tighten her up and I will. you guys can come and take a peek and see what that looks like. If it is a late car, basically, I think it has a brush and you can fit the rest of it because it has that piece. So um, this will flop down. Arm goes through, arm goes through the brush, and that's what we're doing right there. So uh, it will go down below the headlight, and when the headlight comes up, it's going to kind of sit like that. Make sense? So I am going to use the metal push rod, just because that's the one I, I like. 
Um, so for the metal push rod, you have got... It's really going to last longer. Yeah, I, I don't know. I like the metal push rod a little bit better. Um, these guys basically just pop in the end. They're a pretty loose or a, uh, I wouldn't call it a press fit to the arm itself. Um, but they are pretty tight as far as the motor. Um, so when I did this on the other side, I don't think I did the right way. Um, what I would recommend doing is putting in this side, getting it in, pushing in this bushing from the outside and then clipping it rather than wrestling because this is much less pliable um, to get out. So uh, from here, we'll put the bushings in the pivot and then we'll wrestle this arm in, but that is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these guys. So you're gonna get two pivot bushings like this and they just pop in. So when I talked about how far the stop for how far it comes up, you can see that right here and right here. When this pivots up, that is where it stops. Um, and there's an adjustment on the inside here. There's a 13 mil nut that locks it and it's a flat head. So you can adjust that kind of final position here uh, when it comes up. So when it's time to put this thing back in, like I said, I'm gonna take this back apart. Um, the outside gets the two hole and it is a nice snug fit. It, it does rotate really well in there. And the inside gets the three hole. So that is what we're looking at going back into the car. When you put it back in, you just need to make sure, I kind of rotated it like this, that you get this hooked back on that stop. Um, if you don't catch that stop, it's not gonna operate correctly and it's not gonna work well. Um, so there's really not a super graceful way to do this. So if you have a freshly painted car, I don't know, tape, something like that, you could be a little more graceful than I'm being with it. But um, once it pops in place, you'll be able to just kind of rest it right here like that. So this is where some additional new parts come in. You do get new plates right here, but you got to use those old bolts. So um, I will put, put one or two on the inside and then we'll pop some new ones on the outside here. So this is where you do have some of your adjustment. You can see these holes are a lot smaller in here than they are in the car. And so you've got gross adjustment up and down and like this on your headlight bucket. Um, so I am not exactly the best uh, body man. And so I'm not really precise at fitting the panel gaps, but this would allow you some up and down adjustment here in your mechanism. So we'll pop a couple here, do the inside of the fender, and then we'll finish tightening that down later. So this is a good time once these are in to give it a quick test, make sure it rotates the way it should and that you're getting it what you want. For me, I'm just gonna tighten it back down on the same witness marks that are already there. And that's as good enough for my level of precision. Um, and so I'm gonna put it right back where it was because those bushings were not all that trashed. Um, in here so these should thread in super easily and i put it right back where it was these bolts are full of dirt sorry this car sometimes gets to go in the dirt and so the bolt heads are kind of messed up um, and then the same two in the fender don't forget you've got your little cheese head washer then your flat washer then uh, through your plate so cheese head lock washer flat washer pie um, Inside the fender is a little more, more tedious. That's where everything is out. You can stick your hand in and look through the top. It makes it a lot easier than um, who's in charge of seeing where my ports are. You guys realize that's what most of what I'm doing is standing around my guard just trying to find the part that I had five minutes ago. It's not something that is limited to just you guys. We, everybody does that. That's just it. We edit out or speed it up or, you know, or don't, because that's what it's really like, you know? Um, so I'll probably just start these by hand here. I was going to say, that's what I have is the magnet on wheels, and it's, um, it is a very helpful tool. Typically what happens is when I go to blow the garage out after the job is done a week later, 
then I find it. When it's too late, I've already bought another one, and like, whatever. So if anybody that walked up late, my name is Nathan. I, um, I do make some YouTube videos. A lot of them are about 914s. You are being recorded currently. So if you're witness protection, come tell me and I will edit your face out. <laughs> um, but I'll have some videos from the event. I got some good video from the drive. Um, I got a couple of people tell me about their car during the show and uh, some good shots of all the show cars. So get these nice and tight. Like I said, I'm just gonna for now, cause I'm not really aligning it perfectly, get it back to the spot where I can see it was before. How are we doing on time? How am I doing? It's like 3.30. No, it's not. <laughs> it's uh, 4 to 5. All right, 25 minutes. We're doing good. This is why I do one side before I show you guys, because I already know how to do it, and I'm not struggling through it like I did the first time. All right, so now you can test your nice free range of motion here. Make sure that this pivots all the way up and all the way down, and then uh, go ahead and snug these guys up. We'll fight with the push rod. So does anybody have a job on their 914 they're not tackling because they don't know how to do it or are intimidated by it? Things that you guys might uh, be interested in learning or knowing? Everybody knows it. It's good. Push rod keeps seals after the Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's waiting on me to do that on his car. So what I'm gonna do is put this onto the bronze bushing here, and it is a tight fit. These guys are real snug. And so what I'm gonna do is take my push rod, and I'm gonna put it inside here, and use that to push it, because it's exactly, obviously, the right ID to fit over that. So I'm gonna use that to push this down and seat it all the way into that bronze pivot. I, don't, I, know, I know you guys can't see with my hands here. I'm gonna move in a second and show you. So that's where that bushing goes, right there. And so I'm trying something different than I did last time. Um, I'm gonna take my, you can see that bushing is right here. Thankfully, the bushings here and here are totally different sizes. There's literally no way to confuse them. Um, so within the kit, obviously these only serve one function. These only serve one function. <laughs> this serves one function. Yeah. So you're not in a place where you're really gonna get super confused on it. Um, so I'm gonna take this and push it in from through the rubber, through the bristle brush. And I'm gonna go over my motor pivot. And then I'm gonna go over my arm on the outside. So on the outside here, there is no retention. It just is in there. And so I'm gonna take this bushing now and push it in from the outside here. Under my arm. So I, I did it the other way on the other side. And it makes this a much harder job. I'll try that that way. Because um, it gets really tight as you push these guys in. Um, so in the end, you need a bushing in each end of this. This is probably why people switch to the nylon one, but I'm gonna just struggle through it because we're already halfway there. Fortunately, other than the bushings and this stuff, like this stuff is always in good shape when I got my car, so not, uh, I don't think I'll need to even that. So now that I'm in on the inside, it's just gonna be brute force to get it in on the outside, and hopefully a little bit of a prying tool. And. It is helpful to have a car that doesn't have nice paint to work on because it makes this job a lot easier. So if you're standing way in the back, I'm just trying to get this lined up so that this will pop in place. Yep. So now we're in on this side. And what I found when I did this on the other side is it doesn't sit all the way down and that's okay. It's tight, that mechanism is nice and tight. Do you feel a snap or a yeah. seats? Or? Yeah, you can, here, you can come and see. I've got it seated all the way down. And on the inside where the motor is, there's a track for that E-clip. 
and you'll know if you've well, you, made you see it. The, you see the yeah. track, sure. So, um, I don't see the, um, the new, there it is, here's my new stuff. I'm gonna get a new E-clip and a new washer. And this is where, I'll try and, this is the tiniest thing. New washer, old washer, it's about double the thickness. And so I did reuse the old washer um, because there was literally no way I was getting that in there. And so it's just washer and then you pop your new E-clip in and you're good to go. This would be a wise time to test and make sure it works. But since the battery's unhooked, we're just gonna commit and put it all the way back together since I know I'm taking you apart anyway. So from there, your headlight mechanism is good. This is good to go. You are done in here. So you can go ahead and put your cover back on. And this is done. Um, since I'm not gonna really do the alignment right now, I'll go ahead and tighten up inside the fender well. And then I'll show you guys how to put the adjusters on. And then this will be pretty much wrapped up here. So not a super difficult job to tackle, but I, I live with a bouncy headlight and I mess with that adjuster for like, two years before I realized that there was a problem in there and took it apart a little further to, to figure that out. So um, with these guys, you just have to basically feel in there and, and get it in by feel. It is very hard to hold this in place without it falling and a star washer and the nut all at the same time, but it is the way it's done. If you had a lift or if you jacked your car up or turned the wheel a little further, it would be a lot easier. It's a lot easier with um, the uh, wheel off, especially your wheel. <laughs> yeah, eight-inch wheels in the front doesn't leave a lot of room for hands. And it is more difficult with the without the fenders. Yeah. So um, I also lived with this turn signal falling out for years before I realized that I could tighten it. Yeah. That was definitely a. <laughs> I've learned a lot about this car by just doing it and then going, oh yeah, I can fix that. So. I've owned this 914 for about basically four years. I told somebody that a Facebook memory popped up that four years ago, yesterday was the first time I got it started. Um, when I got the car, it had a carbureted single car 1.7 in it, side shift, and some like terrible glass pack exhaust. I had no tail lights. Um, James and Tommy know. Um, mostly to annoy the purists i bought a set of trailer boat tail lights because i didn't want to afford <laughs> the 914 tail lights and uh they were too pricey for my price point and i, I zip tied them with a piece of uh, expanded metal into the openings and i drove it like that for about six months until i bought a parts car that had tail lights uh, but uh mostly because i knew i have a friend that uh was into 944s and it annoyed him so i said i'm gonna do boat tail lights just for you <laughs> So yeah, there's a couple of old, old pictures of the car with the 1.7 and the boat tail lights, uh, but it worked. I learned how to pin out the um, tail lights and get them to be good to go. So, okay, tied in here, tied out here, flapper, brush. This is done. Our bushings are done. Our bushings here are done. So really at this point, we need to put the adjuster back together, um, which is not incredibly difficult. Um, but what we're gonna do is take and put our new adjuster blocks in. So the adjuster blocks are these little Delrin machine deals that snap into place. So you can see the little fingers on there. They snap in and they actually retain themselves like that. One there and one there. The old ones do not have the fingers, or at least these don't. And so that's a good design improvement uh, is because now they don't fall out. You don't have to like two-handed do this to try to get them in place. So I'm skipping the stainless steel adjusters and I'm gonna just go with the stock ones. Um, so at this point, I'm just gonna <coughs> kind of run these back in at some arbitrary depth and then I'll work on the alignment later after I've painted and cleaned and put this all back together. So, so yeah, this car had a 1.7 carb motor for six months, Tommy. I drove it for the first more. time on on uh, Christmas break, um, but what I found was we got it running. It had a broken clutch tube inside the tunnel, so I had to cut the tunnel open, re-weld that. Unfortunately, I welded it about a half inch short, so I, I have a uh, custom spacer in my clutch cable in order to hold it uh, tight enough. Um, 
but the motor spun the Woodruff key and I bought ended up buying a parts car and putting the 73 two liter side shift, all the good, all that good stuff in here. So um, the person I bought the car from had an issue with first gear. And so it, it had no first gear sinker. So I drove it for about four months with only second through fifth until I learned how to break the trans down and change the synchro. But the person he'd taken it to was a 911 guy and had not worked on a lot of mid engine cars. So he put the transmission together with five reverse gears and one forward gear. <laughs> so the ring and pinion was on the wrong side of the, um, the gear stack. And so when I got it, literally I got it moving for the first time, I go, that is not the, where the shifter should be to go in reverse. I mean, I'd never driven a 914. I'd never um, had one before, but that was quite a surprise to realize that uh, my car went the wrong direction. So I had learned to take the transmission apart the first time. It does look the same going backwards as it does going forward. Yeah. So there is a, that. <laughs> There's that. Um, that spring's a lot easier on than off. And so now you can see that mechanism a little bit more. The spring is holding this corner in. And when I'm adjusting this adjuster, it's taking the top like that. So pretty ingenious system. And honestly, this is what like the majority of adjusters look like. And so I'm just going to kind of run them in some arbitrary depth and that's nice and tight in there. So now we've got to struggle with that right angle thing again. I think whoever said that is a good idea. Um, slot it. So you've just got to make sure that this sits down in here and that the recessed part is where you want your two screws for this to go. Don't get it lined up with the screws that hold the cover on. You want the screws that hold this guy on. So I'm uh, totally just gonna put one in there for now. And then we'll just pop our headlight back in and you change those little eyebrow deals and you're good to go. So if you didn't hear me say this when I got when you got here, this is an aftermarket KC LED headlight. It has a huge amount of depth. I won't necessarily recommend it, although they are awesome and super uh, bright. Um, that is the reason is like that. Um, so the only step that I skipped, but you can still do it from here, is the zip tie on the wire. Um, so you just want to make sure you tie this up so that it travels with the headlight mechanism and doesn't get pinched or maimed or anything like that so it's still possible to zip tie this with this reusable tie although it does come with a new one if you want so if you're not carrying zip ties in your 914 then i don't know what to tell you and a fire extinguisher sure put a fire extinguisher yeah you know, we've never given I have a fire extinguisher as a giveaway. I feel like that should be like a door prize. You walk in the door, get fire extinguisher yeah, for you, you a fire extinguisher for you. You get a fire extinguisher. You can be the fire extinguisher Oprah. Okay. Um, so we'll plug this guy back up and just put the three screws in. When you do these, there is a way that it keys in to the headlight. Um, so you've got to get that right so you can feel it seat just like that. And remember, you're putting in the longer ones. Um, that have the big countersink, not the short ones that hold these around. Fortunately, these are these trim rings are stamped Telus, so they are correct and original for this car. So once uh, this car has a really, somebody asked about the backstory. I do have a, a video on my channel with like a 10 minute explanation, but this is the two minute version. This car belonged to, um, Chuck Schubert was my my dad's cousin, first cousin, and he and my dad actually built the flares and uh, built a big bower, like you know, two liter plus motor for it back in the '70s. And Chuck drove it a bunch and you know hammered on it hard, blew that motor completely up. So that's why I ended up with the 1.7. Um, but they're the ones that did the flares, and that's kind of why I've kept it the way it has been. Um, something my dad worked on. Um, Chuck sold it to my grandfather, who took it apart like a lot of guys do with the intention of restoring it. Uh, basically broke it down, labeled it, and left it. And sold it to a family friend who owned a you know, local auto parts store um, who I bought it back from uh, in 2007. So he's known I've wanted the car over 10 years and he goes, when you want to buy it, 
come by and I'll sell it to you for what your grandfather sold it to me. Um, and so he basically put it in storage in 82 and it sat in a unused drive through car wash until we pulled it out, you know, four years ago. So it's a cool story. That's what the three names on the side of the car are, the three family members, including me, that have owned it. Um, so cool family story and that's kind of why this is a car that I'm not, whatever you offered me, I would probably say no to. Um, so this is a car I'm definitely keeping. So when you put these guys in, pop them in like this so that the pokey part sticks to the outside and I'm gonna put two in because clearly not putting that third one in. I'll fix that later. Um, so your new surround is gonna sit in here and you've got your three nice um, rounded head screws that are gonna hold this guy in place and you can put that eyelid in last. Um, so we'll pop these on here and then if you guys have questions or if you want to poke around or ask me for to ask me for how to do something else, I'm not going to promise to know, but I will attempt uh, to tell you. Wait, so you mean your car is not stock? I tried to get in the stock class and they wouldn't let me. <laughs> they wouldn't let me either. You know, <laughs> other than the wheels and the, and the body, you know, the drivetrain was very stock when I got it. Um, you know, the interior was gone, so I mean, it had not had any, you know, anything unusual done to it that I can tell. It had a, it had a tartan in it. It was not like a dealer tartan. It was like a, kind of looked like a grandma's couch. It was like brown, and I have a, I have a piece of it from the seat that was on the bottom when it was in storage. And so I have a friend that did the upholstery, and I said, give me a tartan that looks like this, but with yellow. And so he found what's in the car, um, and apparently it was the last of it, because I've asked for more, and he goes, no, nah, they don't have any more. I will make one comment about that eyebrow. Do it. Um, I had one pass me on the freeway. You need to put a screw in there someplace to anchor them. All right. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah, so when I uh, when I got back from the drive, it was like this yesterday. Uh -huh. um, and I go, hmm, that's unusual. And the air gets and, under and it and it away. What I always did with this is you take and you drill a small hole right here between the two of them. You can see the remains of the hole on this one. And then you take that and you put a screw between there and the sheet metal. Through here. They're designed to be broken, break free if you get your fingers in the way. So you don't want a big heavy screw in there, but you also don't want it to do what mine did and blow past your window at 70 miles an hour in the freeway. Oh, it was your own you lost? Yes. Yeah. Ah. On that red then car. then you've got to go to the painter, take a couple eyebrows, get them to try to match your paint. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's why paint. I'm going to try to save this one as if I can. So, um, more or less, I'm going to get it in place and then uh, I'll hook up the battery and we'll try it. But no, the way that what I did is come in from this side, this way with the screw, it was easier to get at it. And you just put a screw in there, draw it in, and your fingers get in the way, it'll still flex it. Oh, they are. You don't want to put it on both sides. I've seen the tape get out the rubber blocks and just bolted them in with the top with 13 millimeter bolts, and yeah. those aren't going to break away. We have a rain train in our trailer. He was, he was heating up, and I suggested to remove his uh, rain train to get more yeah. air in there. So. It is way tighter. If you weren't here at the beginning, this used to do kind of, it did the dance up and down the road. So it should, hopefully, close. The eyebrow needs a little adjustment, but um, close as well. So questions, comments, jokes, concerns. I'll hang out for a few minutes. I missed it. Did you go over how to adjust the up stop? No, I didn't. Um, I. I did not I, I did that side already. I haven't aligned it, so I'm just waiting to do all of it at the same time. Um, but I, what I told them is, this was so loose, it was doing this, and I worked that up stop a bunch, thinking that was the problem, and the nut on the bronze yeah, bushing was completely missing. I had I heard that part, but I didn't know if you had gone over how to adjust the up stop. No, you want to do it? No, go ahead. You know what you're doing. Oh, you see, first. <laughs> Key on, lights on, parking lights on, they'll stay up so you can mess with it. So on the back of the stop, you really just need a flathead and a 13. There's a lock nut here that you can break off. I'll move in a second, you guys can see it. Um, this one is a little chewed up because I've clearly messed with it before. And then you can use your flathead to, it's a little tight to adjust your up stop here. 
like I said, this one has been painted on. They oversprayed it in here bad. So it's a little bit stiff, but you guys can see, you can see it. You can see my up stop is coming up a little bit and then you can just lock it back down. Um, so an easy adjustment that you can also make if you run out of this, then it's that. Um, would you say this one first then that order of operations? The way I always do it is I get the headlight down mm -hmm. and get everything adjusted so it, the bucket fits in there correctly. Yep. Once the bucket's in there and everything's aligned and all your gaps are correct, you leave the upstop loose. You let the headlight come up and then you adjust the upstop back until it, it until holds it gets where it needs until to it holds the headlight still. The idea of the upstop is when you're going down the, without it, you're going down the road, the headlight will do this just from vibration. When the, if it's up, it hits that stop and presses against it at the bottom, and that holds it in the up position so that the headlight doesn't bounce. And then you adjust the aim with the screws on the, the, the headlight. So the opposite orientation, I like that. Yeah, so you could bust this a little bit. So that when I go to align that, maybe I'll maybe I'll try to make a video on that. Um, that would be the better way to do it. This one is incredibly stiff to turn, um, so obviously it's not been adjusted at all. So. Yeah, that's one of the things when you got the headlight out, take the up stop out, clean the threads, and yeah. chase them with yeah. the tap. Put it all back together and that will make that i'm gonna pull this work. back apart because i'm gonna clean and paint all these parts and uh, i'll do that but well said that's a good point so.